Ethel, darling, I'm at a loss for words. I've been wondering when you'd run out. <laughs> and for goodness sake, Tallulah, pull up your stockings. Oh, Ethel, please. Don't talk like that. I'm grown up now. I'm not the 14-year-old child you knew when I first came to Broadway. I always remember you as that 14-year-old child. No other living actress can make that statement. <laughs> Oh, darling, I'm trying to maintain some dignity here. After all, I am in charge of the biggest show in radio. This mishmash is the greatest show in radio. <laughs> well, it's the only half an hour, hour and a half, I mean, excuse me, Bing. <laughs> hour and a half program on the air. Every Sunday I appear on this show for one hour and 30 minutes from start to finish. You've changed, Tallulah. I never knew you to finish anything in an hour and 30 minutes, unless a possibly, <laughs> possibly a man or two. <laughs> what exactly do you do here, aside from smirking at your friends in the audience and violating every cardinal principle of theater deportment? Well, Ethel, this is not the theater you brought me up in, darling. There is no barrier here between the audience and the performers, you see. Oh, you've always lived dangerously. <laughs> and I have plenty to do here. Don't think this is an easy job, but the whole show rests on my shoulders. I introduce the guests, I chat with them, I do dramatic acting, I announce the auction numbers, I play comedy scenes with the comedians, I sing, I laugh, I cry, whatever the script calls for. What else is there? That's all there is. There isn't any more. <laughs> and a lousy reading of that line. <laughs> say you have plenty of energy, Tallulah. Well, darling, it's not as if I had a show to do every day. It's only once a week. But getting these performers to come here, going to their homes, pleading with each of them. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't do that with all of them, Ethel, darling. You mean you only came to my home and threw that hysterical fit, beating your breast, crawling about the house on your knees, then threatening to cut your wrist with an electric razor? <laughs> Pretty good performance, wasn't it, Ethel? Mm, road company, Judith Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Judith Anderson, I imitate no one. No one, darling. <laughs> well, uh, after all, Ethel, you were the star I idolized, and I still do, in the theater. And you took me on your wing, and after all, you are the great lady of the theater, so I may have, uh, well, I may have picked up a gesture, too. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she sweet? <laughs> Well, maybe then, well, a word or two. Are you inferring that I'm a copy of you, when, as a matter of fact, I have been copied myself? I have been copied to the letter. <laughs> That's who I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I'll give you this, too. Uh, you're a better imitation of me than she is. Well, thank you, darling. Coming from the original, who has spent so many years in the theater. Oh, stop treating me as if I were the queen mother. Well, let's get on with this shindig. <laughs> What do you want me to do now? Sing? Sing? Why not? I planned on singing Pennies from Heaven. <laughs> if that stupid but desirable youth hadn't beaten me to it. <laughs> oh, Ethel, I wish I'd known you wanted to sing. I would have saved it for you. I was just so glad and happy to have you grace our program with your presence, even if you have been making those cryptic remarks about it. Well, I may be a little too harsh. I think you have a very fine show to do, Lois. I do It's smart. It's filled with talent of the highest order. I think it's the best show in radio. Oh, thank you, Ethel, darling. I'm so glad you feel that way. Would you like to come back again some week? I'd rather die. <laughs> Thank you.